Welcome to Reagan and Friends, a podcast series hosted by the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation and Institute. Each month, we will share some behind the scenes moments and stories of President Reagan with some of his more famous friends. Your Majesty, Nancy and I and all of our party are very grateful for your invitation to visit Great Britain and for your gracious hospitality. Our visit has been enormously productive and has strengthened the ties that bind our peoples. I would like to propose that we raise our glasses to Her Majesty the Princess Elizabeth Alexandra Mary, known as Lilibet by her family, was born in the Mayfair London home of her maternal grandparents, the Earl and Countess of Strathmore, on April 21, 1926. She was named after her mother, while her two middle names are those of her paternal great-grandmother, Queen Alexandra, and paternal great-grandmother, Queen Mary. No one in her family expected that she would one day become monarch, but everything changed in December 1936 when her uncle, King Edward VIII, abdicated, making her father king and her next in line to the throne. She was the first child of the Duke and Duchess of York, who later became King George VI and Queen Elizabeth. During World War II, Princess Elizabeth and her sister, Princess Margaret, were moved for their safety to Windsor Castle. There, they focused on their education, participated in air raid drills, and were subject to food rationing along with the rest of the country. As heir to the throne, Princess Elizabeth's education included constitutional history and law as preparation for her future role. She also studied art and music, learning to ride horses, and she became a strong swimmer. At the age of 21, Princess Elizabeth married Philip Mountbatten on November 20, 1947, in Westminster Abbey. She met him in 1934 at a wedding they both attended for Prince Philip's cousin, Princess Marina of Greece. The couple maintained contact throughout the war when Prince Philip served overseas with the Royal Navy, including in the Far East. Their engagement was announced in July 1947, marrying four months later. They had their first child, Prince Charles, now the king, in 1948, and their daughter, Princess Anne, two years later. In 1952, at the young age of 25, following the death of her father, Princess Elizabeth ascended to the throne. Overnight, she went from being a young naval wife and mother to a busy head of state. She was to become known for her sense of duty and her devotion to a life of service, and was an important figurehead for the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth during times of both crisis and celebration. In these years, she had two additional children, Prince Andrew, born in 1960, and Prince Edward, born in 1964. Prince Andrew and Edward were the first children to be born to a reigning monarch since the time of Queen Victoria. The Queen was served by 15 United Kingdom Prime Ministers during her 70-year reign, beginning with Winston Churchill in 1952, as well as many Prime Ministers across her realms. As head of state, she also acted as diplomat and hostess, welcoming over 110 presidents and prime ministers to the United Kingdom on official visits. Of those 110 presidents, 13 were United States presidents. In fact, she met with 13 of the 14 presidents during her reign, everyone from President Truman to President Biden. It was only President Lyndon Johnson that she did not meet. It's been said by palace experts that President Reagan was her favorite U.S. president. But whether that is true or not, they probably bonded over their love for horses. In his autobiography in American Life, President Reagan wrote, There were many, many small moments that made my job fun, such as landing in a helicopter on the lawn of Windsor Castle for a fairy tale visit with Queen Elizabeth and the royal family. The highlight of our stay there came when the Queen and I went horseback riding together and Nancy and Prince Philip took a horse-drawn carriage ride. I must admit, the Queen is quite an accomplished horsewoman. We will always remember our visit to Windsor Castle because of the Queen's and Prince Philip's warmth and welcoming hospitality. They could not have been more gracious. The President was writing of his time with the Queen when he and Mrs. Reagan visited in June 1982. I am so glad to welcome you and Mrs. Reagan to Britain. Prince Philip and I are especially delighted that you have come to be our guests at Windsor Castle. Since this has been the home of the kings and queens of our country for over 900 years, I greatly enjoyed our ride together this morning, and I was much impressed by the way in which you coped so professionally with a strange horse and a saddle that must have seemed even stranger. As we rode over this magnificent this morning, I thought again about how our people share, as you have mentioned, a common past. We're bound by so much more than just language. Many of our values, beliefs, and principles of government were nurtured on this soil. I also thought of how our future security and prosperity depend on 
In February and March of 1983, the Queen and Prince Philip did a 10-day visit to the West Coast. They were supposed to travel the entire trip aboard the royal yacht the Britannia, but a torrential rainstorm kept them from using the yacht most of the trip. After greeting the Queen and Prince Philip in Los Angeles on February 27, 1983, they then hosted them both at the Reagan's Ranch, Rancho del Cielo, on March 1st. Instead of coming in via yacht, they had to come in via plane and then drive up. They were supposed to go horseback riding, but it was pouring rain and there was little visibility. When they finally arrived, as President Reagan wrote in his autobiography, he apologized for the weather. The Queen laughed and said, Yes, it was just dreary, but this is an adventure. Then, on March 3rd, the President hosted the Queen for dinner in San Francisco. It is only nine months since we had the great pleasure of having you and Mrs. Reagan to stay with us at Windsor. Now we have had the memorable experience of visiting you in your home state of California and of seeing your ranch at Santa Barbara. I knew before we came that we had exported many of our traditions to the United States, but I had not realized before that weather was one of them. <laughs> but Mr. President, if the climate has been cool, your welcome and that of the American people has been wonderfully warm. We are very grateful for your charming hospitality and for the generous reception we have had everywhere since our arrival in California last week. One day later, on March 4th, as the weather cleared, the Queen and Prince Philip hosted the Reagans on board her yacht, the Britannia, where they all celebrated Ronald and Nancy Reagan's 31st wedding anniversary. They gifted the Reagans a beautiful engraved silver box. In his diary, President Reagan said, it was a magical evening. The Queen and His Highness are really warm, likable people. In October 1984, the Queen handwrote this four-page note to President Reagan, signing it, Your Sincere Friend, Elizabeth. The note was merely a friendly greeting, letting the President know that she was thinking of him. Now that's a meaningful friendship. The relationship and friendship between the Queen and President Reagan extended beyond President Reagan's time in office. On June 14, 1989, President Reagan received an honorary knighthood from Queen Elizabeth II. The Queen bestowed upon him the Honorary Knight Grand Cross of the Most Honorable Order of the Bath, the highest honor Britain can give a foreigner. The recognition was due to President Reagan's assistance to the United Kingdom in the Falkland War. But let's go back to the Queen's life. In September 2015, she became the longest serving monarch in British history, surpassing her great-great-grandmother Victoria's record of 63 years, 216 days. She saw public and voluntary service as one of the most important elements of her work. Her Majesty had links as royal patron or president with over 500 charities, professional bodies, and public service organizations. These varied from well-established international charities to smaller bodies working in a specialist area or on a local basis only. Her Majesty raised four children whilst undertaking her duties as queen, later welcoming eight grandchildren and 12 great-grandchildren to the royal family. Queen Elizabeth II's reign lasted from the Industrial Age to the Internet Age, 70 years of endurance and stoicism that endeared her to millions. In that time, she worked tirelessly to keep the crown relevant in a changing world. And there were many, many small moments that made my job fun. Landing in a helicopter on the lawn of Windsor Castle for a fairy tale visit with Queen Elizabeth and the royal family. The highlight of our stay there was when the Queen and I went horseback riding together and Nancy and Prince Philip took a horse-drawn carriage ride. I must admit, the Queen is quite an accomplished horsewoman. We will always remember our visit to Windsor Castle because of the Queen's and Prince Philip's warmth and welcoming hospitality. They could not have been more gracious. Thank you for watching. Don't forget that when you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll be notified every time new videos and podcasts are added to our site, including our Reagan and Friends, Words to Live By, and Reagan Forum podcasts. And don't forget to follow at Ronald Reagan on Facebook and Twitter, as well as at Reagan Foundation on Instagram and YouTube.